Hello, welcome everyone to another Inside the Birds TV. This is not an Ask ITV. This is sort of like an emergency ITB TV. Not because the Eagles signed a free agent. Sorry, we don't have any other news for you on that. But the Eagles did make a very big transaction today. And it's a little bit complex. Adam Kaplan, Jeff Mosher here. We'll get into it. Of course, Inside the Birds TV is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, the America's top-rated sportsbook app. Adam Fletcher Cox, who was on the trade block uh, last year, we talked about his fate all offseason. And as of this moment, he is not a Philadelphia Eagle. He was released on, uh, what's today, Thursday in the middle of March Madness craziness. Um, I would love to be able to say all sorts of easy, you know, they saved this, that, and the other. Yeah, yeah. But the contract, uh, as people probably know by now, was very, very complex. If you go to overthecap.com, the guy who runs that does a kind of a good job of explaining the the dual bonuses and um, things that kicked in. But what, what you and I both know is that it's it, sources told us it's savings of sixteen million dollars. But of course, it's a post June first designation. So right now they're carrying that cap charge until after June first. But still, nonetheless, sort of surprising to see on on a Thursday. Yeah, I. Not sure why they did it right this second either. Well, no, they had to. I'll get into that. Oh, uh, they're, they're right. You're right. The bonus. They okay, didn't have I'm a sorry. choice. I, yeah. I just, I'll tell you, it's funny. I track, I, I can't show you this. I have an Excel file. I'm the only one in the country who does this, I'm sure. But, oh, no, John Clayton does it because John showed me his stuff one year. Mm -hmm. I have probably uh, contract language for about 90 contracts for veterans who have either roster bonuses due or, or um, base salary uh, guarantee conversions. Mm -hmm. that are either on the third day of the league year, like Cox's, with his roster bonus, the fifth or the seventh day of the league year. It's really odd. Although James Bradbury's uh, had a, a small base guarantee uh, convert on the first day of the league year on a Wednesday. But because uh, these tell a story, they, they always make it. The reason why I track this, because it gives me an idea of why a team will cut a player or they have to do something. Now, right. sometimes like, by the way, I'll give you an example. And get it up, Jake Elliott. They're not cutting him. He's he's a great story. I mean, he, I, you know, he improved. Uh, he's got two point two five million of his three point seven five million dollar base salary. Uh, became comes fully guaranteed tomorrow, uh, and then he also has a two hundred grand roster bonus, which they'll pay, which he'll earn. I mean, they just he earns it on the fifth day of the league year, which is Sunday. Now, here's a little here's a little inside football note for you. Uh, the reason why the Eagles cut Cox on Thursday is because roster bonuses are due at four four oh one Eastern the day the day before it's actually due. It, it's considered the next day uh, at four oh one Eastern. So the Eagles they turn the trans transaction in. I got the transaction report from the, that all the GMs get, the personnel people get, and it shows it post one designation. Um, several of them had post uh, June one. In fact, uh, Austin Hooper's did for the Browns and right. a couple other players. But uh, and, and you use them when you when it's a significant hit. In particular, Fletcher Cox has one. We'll get into that. But so what happened was uh, Cox had a roster bonus due uh, at on Friday, third day of the league year. So they had to cut him on Thursday before four one Eastern. They did that. Uh, now, what they could have I, – I don't know if they did this, but I know they do, teams do this sometimes. If they want to keep the player or trade the player, and if both sides agree, the player and the agent would have to agree to this, they could ask the agent, hey, could we move this roster bonus back, let's say, to April 15th, give mm -hmm. us more time to trade them or whatever. We just want to avoid cutting them. Now, here's the interesting thing. It's true. All the stuff you sell out there about the Eagles wanting them back, we're definitely told they like to have them back. Um, doesn't that surprise you? No, it doesn't no. surprise me because if you look, and we were going to talk about this, so we'll get into it now. It's not like they're an extremely deep team at defensive tackle. They have Javon Hargrave coming off a Pro Bowl year, his best year of his career. Milton Williams, we'll get into in a second. He's a nice a set, a player that, that was a third-round pick that had a good rookie year. Hassan Ridgeway left the team um, in free agency, signed with San Francisco. He didn't really have a great year last year anyway. And after that, you're you're looking at not a lot of depth, and you can't just rely on a rookie in the no matter what round you draft on true, to come in true, and be able to and be sure that they're going to be able true. to play. So, 
sometimes you would fill that kind of gap right with a free agent anyway. It would be a yeah. veteran, and it would be a much a, a small you know one year deal, which is probably what they want to bring Fletch back on. I sus- so I suspect they would. I do agree they want to bring him back. They made that pretty clear in their own statement that they released, and it is okay. to me interesting. It's actually yeah, real. It's not just a statement. Just so you know, the because sometimes teams say that and they don't really try. But right, our, right, our no, no, I believe that. Yeah. yeah, but it's and it's also interesting that they didn't load up their statement with quotes from Howie and Jeffrey yeah. about how important. I mean, this is a legend for the franchise. He's won a Super Bowl, True. so yeah. it it does make me believe they want to bring him back. However, he's a free agent now. Yep. He did not have the he didn't necessarily have the not only the greatest year on the field last year, but the defense, he clearly didn't love the the structure of it. Mm-hmm. And thirdly, he's gonna get people recruiting him. You saw Zach Ertz already said, Hey, come out to the desert. Here you go. There are going to be teams that are closer to winning a Super Bowl. Yep. You just saw the Bills be able to land Von Miller that all of a sudden are at his disposal, and they may have just as much cap flexibility or or be closer to a Super Bowl, and Fletch may decide he, he wants to go to another team. So I, I do believe they'll try hard to bring him back, but I, I wonder if the allure of a scheme somewhere else where that catered to his strengths, you know, uh, anybody – like you mentioned Chris Kucerek, right, a wide nine guy in San yeah. Francisco. So the Chiefs got Andy Reid. That's the guy who drafted him. There are uh, – Jim Schwartz is with Tennessee. They play, so they play some multiple different fronts, but you, I'm sure they could accommodate someone like Fletcher if they wanted, right? Uh, I'm yeah. just saying there are schemes sure. out there that he may find more desirable 100%. and the money might match. So I don't know how easy this is going to be for the Eagles to bring him back. So let me add to that. So when you play the four, I, I had a former NFL defensive lineman explain to me uh, visually what this would look like. So when you play the four, I not only are you playing inside for you to be able to, if you wanted to rush the passer, you literally would have to loop around. If you're watching us on YouTube here, it would take too long. You just can't rush the passer uh, of playing four eye like you normally would. That's why he needs to be in a one be a one gap penetrator where you can get upfield and get to the passer. That's when he's motivated. That's when he's great. But okay, the Eagles say they want him back. Now, now the question would be if again, if he does come back, you make a great point here. He he he's 31 other teams now have access to him. And he's got an agent who's a big time, Todd France, who is one of the top like three or four agents in the business who you know, teams will be calling him and he can get him a great deal. Yep. Um, so now uh, you make – now the Niners have Ken Law, who's come back from the ACL injury. They just lost. Uh, DJ Jones is terrific. And they signed Hassan Ridgeway for uh, $2.5 million. So he's just a backup. But, man, Fletcher Cox, to me, I, you see, you're right. If I'm Fletcher Cox, what's you've made a ton of money, more money than you could ever imagine. What's more important to you? If you want to get another ring, you're going to play elsewhere. If you love right. Philly, and I, you know, we, from what we understand, I think he lives in Jersey somewhere. Mm-hmm. He's been a great Eagle, be on their Hall of Fame, borderline uh, Pro Football Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. Quite late of his career, maybe he's got two years left in him. What do you want to do? And this is yeah. this is kind of where he's at right now. So I think Todd France did a did a. I'm assuming Todd kind of insisted on this that deadline to for his bonus to kick in, knowing that the Eagles very well could have cut him. Um, Later, like after the draft or, you know, let's say they had drafted a couple of defensive tackles and they didn't want to carry um, Fletch's cap anymore and thought it would be better if they just cut him. And then all of a sudden it's harder to find the money in May and June when teams have made all their free agent signings than it is now when he can probably still get um, a pretty good deal from somebody. Also, if the Eagles had drafted guys or did something like that pushes Fletch potentially down the depth chart. Now he can still go somewhere where he probably has a good chance to still be a starter uh, if a team sees him that way and pay him that way. So, again, there's a lot of obstacles here for the team to bring him back. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, so so on this, because see, on what you were saying, what I remember um, some – because the, the Seahawks, what the Seahawks do with their contracts is and they, they to, to to meet agents in the, in, in the middle because they only do – they only do – Major signing bonus, first year fully guaranteed base salary, and generally rolling guarantees the rest of the contract, which means if the guy's on the roster, third day of the league year, uh, he would get that 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 money would be fully guaranteed. So what happened was agents got sick and tired of it. So what happened is a couple agents said, hey, listen, we, we need to get something done here that's fair to us. 
this plays into what you were saying about getting the roster bonus date moved up. So they forces the team to make a decision earlier. They got it the, the five days after the, the waiver period starts, which is five days after the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. which means it's like mid-February. That's really helpful because if you're going to cut my player, I want him, I want to be able to shop him at the combine. Right. And that's right. that's the key. Now, I'm so glad you brought that up because the roster bonus dates are generally the first day of the league year, third day, fifth day, and a couple in my file, the seventh. And then what the Niners do, although Jack Beck, the agent for George Kittle, did a good job of, of forcing the Niners to push it. Uh, a month earlier, uh, what they do is they use uh, April 1st as that, as that deadline. Uh, Eric Armstead has a base guarantee that converts to fully guaranteed money. Uh, mm-hmm. Alex Mack. And then George Kittle was the first one to break it. He got it third day of league year, which is uh, obviously now it's uh, his base salary is uh, as of now, as we speak here, it, it went from being guaranteed for injury only now fully guaranteed 11.45 million, which means they cannot cut him. Not that they right. were ever thinking about it, but it but, just yeah. tells you that that's why agents have to get these things moved up. And I'm very good point you made about uh, roster bonuses. I'm also gonna I'm gonna say this, and I could be wrong, but it's just my sense. I sense that the NFL did a really good job of reading the room here with the Eagles and Cox because obviously, you know, it was on the trading block. We saw reports, you know, teams were calling. Um, nobody gave up anything of of substance for Fletcher Cox, or else there would have been a trade. But I personally don't think that that means that the league sees Fletcher Cox as such a declining player that he's not worth anything. I think they just felt the Eagles are going to release him or part ways with him. That's the way it looked. I mean, they probably noticed that the defensive structure and his performance in it wasn't great last year. Uh, They did the math themselves and figured, I'll take my chances on trying to lure this guy as a free agent instead of giving the Eagles uh, whatever compensation Howie Roseman might have been looking for. So some people might read it as a sign that he's declined so much that the Eagles couldn't get anything for him, but I, I'm not there yet with him. I thought I think I, I wouldn't I think if the Eagles want him back, right, that clearly means they think he can play. So um I would imagine the rest of the league still thinks that there's gas left in his tank. Maybe not right. what you got five or six years ago, but still a good enough player. Yeah, he, he, he's 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 a on a ten point scale. He's about six and a half. And now, if he plays in a wide nine, uh, like uh, there are like three teams now that use a wide nine quite a bit, and the Niners are one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, he would be great for them. Oh my gosh, as a one gap penetrator, getting upfield. Yeah. The the old uh, the old Jim Washburn line was play the run on the way to the quarterback. I love that. Uh, you know, Ron Jaworski told me that they he Washburn came up with it to stop. I either I'd have to ask him. It might have been for Marshall Falk because I think he talked to Washburn a couple decades decades ago and why he came up with it. Huh. Uh, to, it it's something to stop the Rams' offense. Maybe just for that Super Bowl in '99. I'm not sure. Interesting. But I had not heard. Yeah, I remember him saying for, he was pretty emphatic about it. Oh yeah, Washburn came up with that because of this. Right. Uh, but um, but it, a lot of D corners I've talked to over the years don't think it's a sound front because they mm-hmm. don't like their end so far out that they're get, they're not you know they're not playing the run at all. They're just getting upfield. You're taking two guys out of the play. But uh, anyway, so the, yeah, that I I really thought if the, I didn't know about the roster bonus, that was one mm-hmm. thing I didn't have. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why it happened. But if they didn't have the roster bonus, I still think they would have been able to trade him by the draft. I do. I know some people look at this contract and some teams will not want to deal with the option bonuses. The Eagles are the king of the option bonuses. Right. Just about every extension has them. It's uh, mm-hmm. I, I get right. it. They're, they found a mechanism. Uh, to to get, gain some leverage in terms of uh, cap management, but um, yep. yep, he's Fletcher's now in his thirties. And the other thing is, I, I, my sense is, as much as they love Milt Williams, and he certainly was a great story, they don't think he's ready to be a full time starter. Right, um, I got the he, same vibe. He, right now, as we speak, now they have three first round picks. Mm-hmm. We've said for I don't know how long we you know the the. If they kept two of them, based on where they're picking in the middle of the first round, most likely it would be a DN and a corner. Mm-hmm. Now you got to stick. Not I should have thought it through uh, weeks ago when we talked about this, but I think D tackle now. Even if Fletcher comes back, you don't know how much he could play. As you said earlier, he doesn't love this scheme. Now maybe they, there were some adjustments made in the second half of the season. We don't know about this season yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't. And he's he's a declining player. He's got again maybe two years left in him. They have to they have to address the D tackle position. So right now. As yeah. we speak, this you want to talk about thin. 
This is Thinny Thin from Carvel Ice Cream. Ready for this one? Hargrave, as you mentioned, Milton Williams would have to be a starter. Tui Pelotu really didn't play. Marvin Williams who didn't play. Marvin Wilson who didn't play. And Ronell Wren, who, came, who who was with the Bengals. So they don't they can't they can line up with two guys. It's um it's it's a good thing we've talked about that free free agency isn't just three days. You've got and then of course there's a draft because if we were to judge the Eagles right now, even with the Hassan Reddick signing, you'd say they're not better i because of course they have no safeties and they still don't yeah. have a corner opposite slate but sure. even if even if you just assume they fill those holes i mean at this point whatever safety you're going to get it's not going to be a very high level safety um unless you draft a young guy and he's incredible same thing at corner but defensive line adam you gained well let me say pass rush you gained hassan reddick good move you're losing Derek barnett maybe losing fletcher cox and you don't know when Brandon Graham's going to be back and how healthy he's going to be and how effective he's going to be right away. So right now, as we sit here, the Eagles got work to do on the defensive mm-hmm. line. And yes, they're going to, they're going to address that in the draft because they always do. Um, but you can't always rely on rookies to just come in and tear it up, especially when you don't have a top mm-hmm. 10 pick You're you're 15, 16 and 19. So there's a lot of work to be done here. Um, yep. It would be beneficial if they could figure out a way to bring, Fletcher Cox back, and if they don't, mm-hmm. it's even more work that they're going to have to do. There's no hey, and they've they've got receive, work to do with the receiver position. We'll get into that in a minute. They, they've got yeah. they don't have a set out second outside corner. They they don't have right now to, just based on what we know, and and the obvious stuff is they don't have a number two, number three, or number four outside corner. They just don't. They could say what they want about McPherson, but he he I know he improved, but I they don't know yet about him. Right. So they've. They've got to figure this out, man. This is, uh, you know, Maddox is a terrific slot corner, but I'm talking about outside corner opposite Slay. They mm-hmm. don't have that guy. Yeah. So they got a lot of work to do here. Um, a little bit more than I expected on defense. No question about it. I wonder if the Eagles told Fletch, you know, go test the market. You, we know you'll mm-hmm. get offers. Mm-hmm. Come back to us with your best offer, and we'll, we'll try to match or see if we have the ability to match. And by the way, as we've talked about before, after on June 2nd, they'll free up a lot of that money, that's 16 mil, if Fletcher Cox is not back by then, you can probably start to look at that excess cash flow at the other guy, Javon Hargrave, and say, now we have some flexibility to give this guy an extension because we don't want him going into the final year of his contract and then hit free agency. We want to be able to extend this guy. So I would imagine later down the road in a couple months, we'll be having that discussion. Not that, by the way, you could also bring Fletcher Cox back and still give Hargrave an extension, but I'm just saying with the influx that you're going to get after June 1st, that'll probably help that process along. Yeah. 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 Uh, and remember they have to carry that cap hit through June 1st June and 1st. June 2nd, they get the, right. re- they get, they could split it in, uh, over two seasons. That's the post June one, which they get two, by the way, mm-hmm. um, they used to teams only used to have one. Now they have two. Right. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm, I shouldn't say a lot. Uh, I thought they'd be able to move them. I really did. But I didn't know about the roster bonus when we were talking about it last week. So um, yeah. now, now you know how these roster bonuses work. Yep. Uh, always the day before at Fort Pym Eastern. It, it, by the way, it was not always like that. One of the uh, cap manager told me it used to be uh, 12.01 a.m. Eastern. Mm-hmm. Then they thought it was ridiculous. Like, what, are you going to cut someone at 11.59 at night? <laughs> so right. That, that's, by the way, that's why free agency, if you remember, you and I used to have to work. Oh yeah, God! Yeah, so I used to begin at midnight. Oh, terrible! Worst. I felt like I was back at at, at uh, in college and having exams, staying up all night. Yeah. It was the absolute worst. And Asians complain, cap managers complain, and they moved to Fort Pym Easter. Thank goodness. Yes, no doubt about it. All right, download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the promo code ITB to get all your sign-up bonuses. That's promo code ITB to get all your sign-up bonuses on the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app. Um, Just some real quick things before we get out of here. Uh, Allen Robinson got a great deal in free agency from the Rams. I mean, that's – whoo. Good, good for them. Good for him. I, I happen to be, you know, I'm a Penn State guy, so I like Allen Robinson, and I'm kind of happy he's finally getting to play with a good quarterback. So we'll see if he is a player in decline or if he just was a player stuck in a bad situation. Yeah, our understanding is that they talked to the agents at least multiple times. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I have no idea where it went. Uh, here's what I know. They've acknowledged by their movement and, and uh, talks with agencies and so forth. They clearly know or trying to get a veteran receiver in there. Mm-hmm. Whether it's Juju Smith-Schuster still out there, 
you know, they haven't done anything with him, so maybe he doesn't, maybe he signs somewhere else. Um, Al Robinson interest, DJ Chark some interest. Uh, who there was another receiver they were on. I, I, I'm drawing a blank here. I'll, I'll look it up. But oh, and Calvin Ridley, of course, the Calvin Ridley. They, he would have been an Eagle had he had uh, you know, had the gambling issue. Um, yeah. So they, they, there you go. That that gives you the answers to the test there. Right. So. so so at this point, I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. Did you have more on? Okay. At this point, from an Eagles standpoint, you know, Juju Smith-Schuster is still out there. Uh, and after Juju, sort of like we said with the safety, I mean, it really starts to then you get into Byron Pringle. Yeah. I mean, Jarvis Landry is still out there too. But He's a slot. It, only. Yeah, it does feel that that the the talent level is now really thinning out here, at that position as well. Here's Here, here we go. Here's, here's my file. Landry, who could play outside, he, one year was forced to play outside because the Browns had injury issues on the outside. But he yeah. really is best in the slot. Tough guy, leader, uh, very good football player. Lana's talking to him. Juju, as you mentioned, OBJ's mm-hmm. come back from an ACL. Forget about that. Will Fuller's bit. He's either feast or famine. A lot of touchdowns where he gets hurt. Um, but he's a good football player. But uh, I don't see it. Alan Lazard, forget it. He's a restricted free agent. He was tendered pretty high. He, he ain't coming here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Crowder slot only big injury history good player though T.Y. Hilton's near the end of his career yep A.J. Green near the end of his career uh Amanda Sanders did not play well last season great mm-hmm. player in his day man Re- leader oh yeah oh yeah run could play inside or outside but I don't know if he has anything left I'm told that they're not in on MVS Mar- Marquez Valdez Scantling so okay. how about Zach Pascal? how about Zach Pascal? I mean, what's he going to do for you I bet he, he, he wasn't a slot receiver, receiver and I mean you he can play well. there I just outside. don't think that that's the type of move that that you know really moves the needle for the Eagle fan or or, wow. or makes the team that much he, better. He, I, he catches the football. The guys that – now, okay, you'd rather be your third receiver. Like if they have the druthers. Now, if Quez Watkins to Sirianni's word, well, Pascal would be a good signing because I'm looking at this list. Okay, mm-hmm. there's your guy. Laquan Treadwell, who played very well, revived his career. He's still out there. He's got side. Would that be my dream? Laquan Treadwell you coming probably to the wouldn't Eagles? Sleep tonight. You wouldn't sleep if they say sign him. It would it would take away everything I've ever said about them about the safety position. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but really? Would it? No. Dude, you like bad no. mouth them to hell. Um, Traquan Smith, who's an in- inconsistent player, who's an Eagle killer. Uh, James Washington has been an enigma, who we talked to Cosell about. He's more of a fourth receiver. Keelan Cole is a backup. D. Jacks, I'm told, wants to play. Obviously, he's not coming back here. Uh, Perriman's back with the Bucks. John Ross, who could run it. At one point, the Eagles, I know, checked into him years ago uh, with the Bengals or, yeah, Bengals. Uh, Auden Tate's out there. He was big and could run a little bit. Uh, he's faster than a slow 40 time. He actually could go, get after it. He's out there. It's not a good list, folks. The Eagles tried. Um, they got to get a veteran in here. Where they Now, you make a great point about it's only the, the technically – the one, two, three, fourth day of free agency, the second official opening day. Right. Uh, but the guys could get cut. It's not panic mode. Games aren't until um, September, as we said the last show. I always have to remind myself. Yeah, there's trade market. There's yeah, draft. yeah. But, there's but things you can do. You, the, the guys are really would have fit. Um, whatever. I mean, what, what can you do? Um, man, if they don't get Juju... Pringle will be a great returner because, as we reported a couple weeks ago, uh, I know they have interest in Richie James, as you mm-hmm. and I have heard, so, yep. uh, who is Mr. One Game as an explosive receiver. <laughs> uh, but that's it. Marquise Goodwin's out there. I don't see him coming back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would not be good. I mean, I'm, I'm – oh, yeah. EQ St. Brown, who's a kid who's a talented player, has been hurt a lot. Demarcus Robinson is like a fourth receiver. Nah, it, it's it's not good. No, not good at all, but we will see. Um, sometimes the, the Eagles have a way of surprising us, and we will we will see if they got anything under their sleeve. Make sure you're checking out the um, the latest Intel, the Intel with Greg Cosell on the Inside the Birds platform. We did a whole thing on um, Hassan Reddick and how he fits this new Eagles defensive scheme. It's really good stuff from Greg Cosell, and that's out, so make sure you're checking that out as well. And that's going to do it for this uh, emergency edition of Inside the Birds TV. For Adam Kaplan, I'm Jeff Mosher. Everybody enjoy your weekend. We'll catch you on the next one.